Well, Saturday night was one of the great nights in the history of San Diego sports. San Diego State coming back from a 16-point second-half deficit to take down the New Mexico Lobos and win the regular season Mountain West Conference title. And joining us for a few minutes today here on the Mighty 1090, Coach Steve Fisher. And, Coach, not only do you win the regular season title on Saturday night, congratulations. Today you're named the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. Uh, thank you, Coach. Uh, we tell our team, when you win, everybody benefits. And uh, I think that's a fact, it's both with player and coach. So I appreciate the, the mention of that. Uh, it doesn't happen unless you have a team that's successful. And, of course, Xavier Thames named the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year, and you had some other players win awards. And we'll get to that in a minute. But let's go back to Saturday night. Uh, just an incredible crowd, the enthusiasm. You guys come out, and all of a sudden you're down there in the second half, 41-25, to 25, and you decide to go to a 1-3-1 zone. Uh, what made that uh, decision uh, for you? Well, I think they said it on TV, desperation. Desperate times. <laughs> you say, what could we try? And I didn't think I could get them to, to let me uh, uh, have uh, any of our former players to come back and play. Kawhi was not going to be able to come in. So we said, what can we do? And we had done it a little bit. and Let's, let's try it. And then by the what happened when we tried it, we played it, John, the last 19 possessions. I went back and charted everything. Uh, from the 11:30 mark or 11:33 mark to the end of the game, 19 possessions we played it. Now scored them. I think they scored four points until they hit that buzzer three. Coach, how much will you practice a one-three-one uh, zone or any other zone during the week at practice? Not much. Uh, Justin Hudson, we talked early, early, like in October, November. We need to have a zone just in case, and let's work on it and. So we toyed around, what do we want to do? Do we want to do Syracuse 2-3? And Justin said, I've got, I'm familiar with a 1-3-1. I had some familiarity also with a 1-3-1. So Justin put in a 1-3-1. We, we've worked on it. It's not like we threw it in and hadn't done any work. But we don't work on it with regularity. And we sometimes go a week and not work on it. So it's seldom talked about, worked on. But obviously, it paid huge dividends on Saturday night. Coach Steve Fisher, our guest here on the Mighty 1090. Uh, you guys come back and win that ball game, and Xavier Thames uh, wrapping up the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. That was announced here a couple of hours ago. But he really came up big for you. You know, really, Coach. Over the last uh, six games, his shot's been kind of uh, missing in action. But boy, he really shot the lights out the other night. Shot 50 percent from the field, and once again down the stretch, really nailing those free throws. He sure did, Coach. He did the same thing at Vegas when we we fought to get a win. X was the difference in that game. And he has been most of the season. And he was again Saturday night. Uh, he made some some attack plays off the bounce to get us baskets when we had to have them. And he's automatic almost when he goes to the free throw line. And he continued to do that. We were two points ahead when they fouled him. And he made the last uh, four free throws for us to give us that six-point cushion. It was really nice today when they uh, announced all the different awards for the Mountain West Conference. That Josh Davis was uh, uh, recognized as the newcomer of the year. You and I have talked a lot about him. Here's a guy that last year at Tulane averaged over 17 a game. He's averaging uh, about nine and a half right now, but doing a great job on the boards. Had nine more rebounds the other night, but he's had to sacrifice his game quite a bit, I think, this year offensively for the better of the ball club. And it was nice that the coaches around the, the conference noticed that. I agree with you, Coach. Uh, obviously, we on the home front see it every day. And, and I mentioned it once again as we prepared for to go out on the court, talking a little bit about the two seniors. And I told the, the team what I had told Josh and mentioned before. We have no chance to be where we are without Josh Davis. When he parachuted in here <laughs> and we added him to this roster, it was all the difference in the world. I mean, we can talk about X and the player of the year, which he is, but you you need Josh Davis with this team to be what we are, 27-3 and three conference champions. And I, I said the same thing. You made a lot of sacrifices and commitment to be a part of this. You wanted to be a part of a championship program. You've, you've made that happen. And I think everybody needs to know that. And people that, that, that play the game and follow the game, it's nice to see that they they see it and appreciate it. 
Dwayne Poli uh, voted today the sixth man of the year, and here's a guy that had to fight for a uh, playing time uh, early in the year. You brought it up to me. He didn't even play against Arizona, but he had uh, really been deadly coming off your bench this year, and the, the uh, coaches recognize that as well. He has, Coach, uh, and it's uh, the, the later it's gotten in the season, the better he's played and the more he's played, and it was exemplified uh, tenfold when he hit the game winner at uh, Boise State, but it's gone from there and even before that. And the way he handled the point of that 1-3-1 zone, you talk about making it work, he's the guy that made that work with his activity, length, and his willingness to play when he could hardly see, much less uh, continue to play out there. Hey, going back to to going to that zone, when you looked at any of the films against New Mexico, and I know your staff pours through just about every game, and especially the uh, few uh, leading up to that game on Saturday night, uh, did you see anything that would tell you that if you went against uh, New Mexico with a zone, it may give them problems? Not really, Coach. Uh, they're a really good veteran team. Uh, you know, Kendall Williams was – MVP of the league last year as their guard. Greenwood is a really cerebral guard. So you've got two guys out front that know how to play. But uh, it was unexpected. I mean, we didn't even expect to do it. So how could they expect us to do it? And uh, they they turned the ball over quite a bit. Uh, I think they turned it over, I think, seven times in that 19 possessions. And and they only threw the ball, they were only able to get the ball inside to the rim, three of the 19 possessions. So when the two guys that are scoring all their points can't get touches, it's obviously helpful to you. And we had a way, you know, we were really good on double teaming when it went to the corner, and we made it hard for them to get it inside. Will you uh, spend a little time on the one three one this week in practice leading up to the tournament? I'm not sure how much, some. But I promise you the other teams will spend a little time on it if they're going to play us. So it makes them prepare for a little something different, too. Uh, we'll go through it and talk about what we did and even the things that, that we did that we could have done better. Uh, but we now have that as something that we can say, let's try it for a possession or two. And if it doesn't work, you can hop out of it. If it does, you can stay in it longer. Coach, what's the uh, schedule? And that was such an emotional win. And uh, you got to get your team back, uh, I guess, probably uh, mentally uh, a little bit because, I mean, they, they left it out on the court the other night and then the celebration when everyone came onto the court yesterday. I would imagine you, uh, your staff, and the players had to be physically and mentally exhausted. How are you going to get these guys back, and what's the practice plan this week leading up to Thursday's game? That's the, that's the challenge. That's what you have to be able to do, and it, it – I'm confident and comfortable with the with the veteran leadership we've got. And we've gone through all of that before in terms of who leads us. But they've been really good at being able to get back down to earth, move forward. Uh, but we have to be smart as coaches to say we're at the down – we're at the tail end of the practice season. So we need to shorten them. We need to be specific and to the point. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the, they'll vary. Tomorrow, Tuesday, will be our longest, hardest practice. Today, we'll do a little bit on the court. Uh, we'll watch film. We'll, we'll do things. Uh, then Wednesday, we practice, have a short practice before we leave to play three games, hopefully in three days. Coach, I, I take a look at who you're going to match up against on Thursday, either Utah State, the eight seed, or nine seed, Colorado State. Either one of those teams can be very, very dangerous. And when I look at and see Utah State number eight and Colorado State number nine, I guess I'm a little surprised. I am too. I was the guy that was saying privately, watch out for Utah State. They could be the sleeper in the league this year. People are not talking enough about them. I think they were picked right below us for fifth in preseason. Well-coached veteran team. They're one of the leading three-point shooting teams in the nation still. Um, so you know what we did there. It took us to overtime to win the game. Colorado State is very well coached. We had two tough games with them, even though we won both of them also. So the, whoever the winner would be, we're smart enough to know no game is going to be easy. We're going to have to grind the game out, find a way to get a spurt, and do the staples, guard and rebound that basketball 
in order to va- to advance in the conference tournament, which is what our intentions are. Coach, today uh, you're tied uh, with Michigan in the AP poll at number eight. And in the USA Today coaches poll, you're ranked seventh. Uh, what do you feel that you have to do in the Mountain West Conference tournament? Do you have to win it to maybe get a, uh, a two seed or a three seed? Or are you looking at any of those things right now? I, you know, I, I hear enough from others to, to, in terms of what's out there. Uh, I would say in order to have any chance to get, uh, to get a two, we would have to win the tournament. Uh, so we want to win. We want to win the tournament. And the more you win, the better opportunities you have. But it's really important, I think, to be able to be slotted in the West. And everybody tells me, well, you if you finish in the top four C, they 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 probably will not think about moving you out out of your geographical region. So it would keep us out West, and which would probably mean either Spokane or or uh, or San Antonio, and then with the opportunity to advance to uh, Anaheim, which is what we want. We want to have the ability to play West, and and if we can win two, to stay out here. That's our goal. And in order to do that, we need to get a top four seat. Just as far as the Mountain West Conference is concerned, let's say that uh, uh, the Aztecs and New Mexico get to the final. I, any other teams in this conference right now you think going to get in the NCAA tournament aside from uh, the Aztecs in New Mexico? Coach, I'd like to say yes, but I would have to say no. In order for a third team to get in, they're probably going to have to win the conference tournament. And then the two that are going to get in, New Mexico and ourselves, we will be joined by a third. I think the only way that's going to happen this year is for one, someone, anyone other than us win the conference tournament. Coach, have a great week. Good luck on Thursday, and congratulations on the win Saturday night. Congratulations on your uh, Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year Award today as well. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. There you go. Coach Steve Fisher of the San Diego State Aztecs. Aztecs will go into Mountain West Conference tournament play with a 27-3 and record overall. Again, uh, the rankings came out earlier today. The Aztecs are ranked eighth. They're tied with Michigan in the AP poll. In the USA Today coaches poll, they're ranked seventh. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll get to your phone call. San Diego, 858-457-1090. Our toll-free number, 877-792-1090. Coach John Contero to 3 o'clock and Scott and BR right here on San Diego Sports Leader, the mighty 1090.